Breaking story we're following at this hour. The January 6th committee unanimously votes to subpoena Donald Trump. And here to discuss this development is political science professor Stephen Caliendo. Professor Caliendo, always good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Great to see you. All right, so this panel has issued dozens and dozens of subpoenas. What do you make of the timing here? This is supposed to be the last uh, January 6th committee hearing of the year. Uh, talk about the timing on this subpoena of the uh, former president. It's curious in one sense that if they really wanted the president to, to testify that they may have done this much earlier in the process, but I think they understood that the president's not going to show up. Uh, whether they subpoenaed, whether they invited, um, there'll be a lot of uh, legal delays uh, and uh, the president will not be showing up to testify. So uh, this was, you know, this was sort of a last, you know, during their closing argument, which is essentially what this felt like, a closing argument in a, in a criminal trial, um, the, the, the last powerful statement uh, was a unanimous vote to compel the president to come uh, to testify. So if he does not comply, what action can be taken? Well, typically, if you or I uh, disregarded a congressional subpoena, we could be put we could be put in prison. <laughs> but but uh, there's a president's going to have all kinds of arguments about immunity, about, or, or rather about um, uh, about executive privilege, for instance. And so this would take a, a great deal of time. And at, at the same time, there's other legal maneuvering that's happening. Right, the Justice Department is involved with respect to the Mar-a-Lago uh, seizure of materials, with respect to um, there's there's questions about uh, in Georgia, for instance, about trying to steal the election. So there's lots of legal proceedings going on, in addition to the fact that the January 6th committee will make some recommendations to the Justice Department for additional information. I, I think this is really part of getting it in the, in the record for history, mm. and it's a little bit of posturing on the part of the, of the committee. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, one more question for you, Professor Caliendo. Other than the, the, the subpoena, obviously that's a big takeaway, but uh, uh, you described uh, today's hearing as somewhat of a closing argument. What were your other uh, biggest takeaways uh, from today's uh, hearing? I would mention two things. One, one was the, the new information that we received um, uh, that we didn't have er in earlier hearings from the from the um, uh, from the uh, from the president's detail and from the Secret Service uh, on January sixth. We didn't get a lot of it, but we got a little bit of it. The other thing that was powerful was never before seen video of the congressional leadership. Who was taken away to what we it was an undisclosed location until we learned today that they were at Fort McNair, right in Washington D.C. Uh, and and some of the video that was that we got to see and and the audio that we got to hear today of those folks working really hard to try to make sure everybody was safe. And I think that was powerful today because it's it's um, it's it's juxtaposed to the president of the United States, who who we learned uh, was watching TV all day long and throwing his food against the wall, and, and Mark Meadows sort of sitting on his uh, couch and scrolling through his phone uh, while this was all happening. Mm -hmm. So I think that it was a powerful way uh, to end these public hearings. All right, Stephen Caliendo, North Central College, thank you so much for joining us and explaining all of that. That's great. Thanks. Thank you.